Hey there, Coach Patrick from Endurance Nation, back with another Coach Videocast Podcast Edition. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about um, intervals, running speed. Okay, um, so April has been the month of running. Obviously, here inside Endurance Nation, we've had some incredible performances, not only at the Boston Marathon, congratulations, uh, but to ultra running at the Austin Rattler, which is a great event for those of you looking to build up to something epic like Leadville, not me. Uh, but regardless, um, getting into the season and getting into running means running with some intentionality. And one of the best ways to do that is to incorporate intensity into your training program. But what's the best way to incorporate intensity in your training program, right? Like, where do you begin with that conversation? For many athletes, it's simply a function of, um, you know, being being you, hanging out, um, just chilling. And all of a sudden, you're like, bing, bing, bing. And you're like, oh, look, my, my phone rang. And it's like, oh, look, new article. How to kill yourself with intervals. Read this now. That's how most people do intervals, right? Or maybe they're part of a group or a club that does intervals. Um, intervals are simply one of the many tools that go inside the toolbox that are the training opportunities you have in your season. And the type of tool you need to use is specific to what you're trying to accomplish. So if you are preparing yourself for a marathon or a half marathon, or you're preparing yourself for um, an, a triathlon, maybe you're preparing yourself for an ultra running event. Depending on the type of event you're doing, you have a different set of tools at your disposal. Running intervals can be used in different phases of your training program to help you create additional stress, right? Um, which leads to adaptation in terms of your fitness. So if we were to map out sort of on a macro level what the year looks like, we start um, say across um, like a 24-week season, right? Six months, 24 weeks. Those first, you know, four to six to eight weeks, those are all foundational, what people would typically call base miles, right? Those are just running frequency inside endurance station. We talk about run durability, just building some competency, some fluency and resiliency general through running, right? So you've got a, a weekly mileage target, usually supported by a weekly running frequency target inside endurance station. I want lots of little runs, not just a bunch of a few longer runs, right? Six five-mile runs is better than three 10-mile runs in my world, okay? Um, and then we move from that into the more um, specific um, sort of general preparation phase. So we go from that base phase to the general prep. The general preparation phase is when we start doing more volume and work that's associated with the type of distance you're going to be doing for your race. So in that situation, um, we're doing workouts that are distance oriented. For example, we'll pick the um, half marathon distance. We're doing workouts that start targeting um, distances. So getting you closer to 10 miles a week. Um, we start doing, uh, sorry, 10 miles in a long run for the week. We start doing um, intervals related to strength. Um, and we do some of those relate, you know, for example, like hills. We might have you do some work at a specific heart rate zone or power zone, like zone three, sort of that upper steady uh, tempo zone. Um, we start accumulating time in that space. And then eventually move to specificity, which is the last phase um, which is where we start to prepare you for the actual rigors of the race. Runs at race pace, runs faster than race pace, um, long runs, we focus on your nutrition and so on. And that middle phase, that general preparation phase is an opportunity for us to use intervals. So we will drop some of that weekly volume and we'll replace the stress that those easier miles generated with runs that have more quality associated with them, um, which if, generally speaking is some level of intensity. Uh, and the type of run intensity you'll use will then increase that stress, right? So um, if you're, if we looked at your pie chart and we saw what your time in each zone was, in that early part of your season, the base time, you're probably spending 60 to 70% in kind of zone one or lower, just easier aerobic time getting the running done. In this second general preparation phase, that's when we start to see the, the pie chart shift and we start to see a, a broader percentage of time in zone um, not only in that zone three specific to the half marathon that we're discussing, but also in zone four and above where we're looking at some of that threshold or harder intensity work to make you successful. Okay. So that middle part of the season, which typically falls somewhere between spring and summer as people prepare for their summer races means doing more time at run intervals. Okay. So when you're doing time at run intervals, <clears throat> what's the best way for you to do run intervals, right? So there's really sort of two camps on this. And I want to talk specifically today about using a power meter and the stride power meter for running with intervals. But in general, um, run intervals, essentially speaking, are a, a set distance or time. You can use either metric, a run at a specific intensity level to generate fatigue, stress, and then have an opportunity for recover. So in the case of this general preparation intervals, 
the strength related work we would be doing are anywhere from a half mile all the way up to two miles in terms of duration. So in some cases that may be a half mile, maybe four minutes for you, whereas two miles, maybe 16 minutes. And you'd work your way through that progression across the course of several weeks to get stronger and more resilient. Um, we start off small and then we build up. The longer work that we do, and um, when we get to this sort of two, um, two mile repeat, is the same as the shorter work in terms of the rest interval, okay? So um, if you're doing um, a half a mile, four minutes, you get equal rest on that. So four minutes of work, four minutes of rest. As you get fitter, some of that rest will drop and eventually you get to a place where you can do four minutes of work and two minutes of rest or 800 on the track of work and 400 of rest, right? Or half a mile on the open road and a quarter mile of rest, right? The idea being that over time, as you get fitter, you can reduce the recovery window to increase the total training stress in that block of, of, of intervals, right? So when we think about doing intervals and intervals with power and using our stride power meter, things are a little bit different than you would use if you're using other modalities, right? So what's great about having a stride power meter is that it gives you your actual real-time power now. And you can also use Garmin Connect IQ and dial in fields on your watch that actually show you lap power as well, right? So I can get a sense of what my power is not only now as I'm running, my average power for my total run, but I can actually get a sense of that lap power as well, which is very specific to this interval that I'm doing, which is fantastic, right? So if I have a critical power number, my run power number that I know for me is sort of like around 380, then I know based off of that, the number that I want to hit for my sort of threshold type work of these harder interval works tend to be in that sort of 350 to 365 zone, right? So I've got that 350 to 365 zone that I want to hit. So whether I'm running for time, whether I'm running for distance, whether I'm running on a road, whether I'm running on a track, I basically want to get my run power meter to be sitting between 350 and 365, boom, for that duration, which is fantastic. So having power means that's what I do, right? If I'm running uphill, 350 to 365. If I'm running downhill, 350 to 365. Um, and the simplicity of it may be lost upon you because probably part of you thinking, well, it's okay, that sounds good to me. Well, imagine if you were using heart rate, right? If you're if you were trying to do this with a threshold heart rate number, which let's just say is 145. Well, if you're doing a four minute interval, it's going to take two minutes for your heart rate to even get into the space of your zone. So you feel like for two minutes, you're not doing work, even though the muscles, your body, doing an incredible amount of work. It just takes a while for your heart rate with that general lag to respond. What if you were using pace, right? And you're outside or you're running on the track in the wind. You've got, you know, half a lap in the wind and half a lap with a tailwind. So half of your, your lap, you're running into this headwind and you were trying to hit seven minute miles, but you're running 7.30, so you're failing. So you murder yourself to go to sevens in the wind. Then you flip it and go down the other side and you've got a tailwind. And you're saying, I got to run sevens. And you it's all you can do to hold it at sevens because your body wants to go 645s with this wind at your back. So you're essentially doing micro intervals inside your interval to get a, a general pace that meets your target goal. Whereas if you had a power meter with a stride power meter, you can see right away in that headwind, it accounts for the extra work. The headwind reflects as a hill. And you can see that in the pace and the work that your body's doing. Same with a tailwind. You can see the work that your body's doing and measure that accurately. So it eliminates that terrain consideration, it eliminates that weather consideration, and allows you just to focus on what you're doing. And for me, what I love about it most is that it sets me free from the track. I don't have to go to the local high school and try and find a time when uh, the joggers and the walkers aren't on there, um, the kids aren't on there training, uh, and I can get my time and I can run, right, and get in and get out. Um, now I can do it with my stride power meter anywhere I want. I can hit the lap button using my Garmin, um, and go out and do my piece. Now, one of the tricks I like to use is that I have a couple set areas around town that I know are exactly a mile or exactly a half mile. And I still like to go back to those areas to kind of do that um, repeat work for me as a mental perspective. It's really nice to have that actual physical start and end landmark to my intervals. So if you have the opportunity to do that where you live, that's always a nice option as well. But at the end of the day, what we're really trying to do here is create conditions for you to be successful by allowing you to add stress to your run. And when you use a power meter for running, uh, like the stride, it simplifies everything and allows you to do that specific work. And then obviously all the other pace numbers are affected by your threshold running and are essentially percentages off of that. So if we can increase time at threshold and we can increase your training fitness, eventually get your run threshold higher, that means the power you can sustain for a marathon, the power you can sustain for a half marathon or a 10K, all those numbers move up as well because they are a function basically of a percentage of your 
um, overall threshold power. And we cannot be as accurate. We can get pretty close, but we cannot be as accurate with pace. And we certainly can't be as accurate with heart rate, which always evolves with training conditions, with time, with fatigue, with dehydration. Very hard to kind of find an aggregate number that we can follow and track and see improvement over time with that heart rate, right? So as you think about adding run intervals to your program, if you don't already have a stride power meter, I super encourage you to get one. It's a great investment in your training and racing. And it makes these critical workouts like these pace workouts and these um, interval runs, whether you're on the track or off, so much more easier to execute, easier to quantify, and easier to use to improve, right? Not running intervals with a stride power meter is kind of like riding your bike for time, but sort of with blindfolds on. You can't quite see the dial or you put tape over the dial. Now, now I don't know how hard I'm working. I think it's hard enough. I'm not sure. You're getting back into that guesswork and having a stride really eliminates that. You could take it to the next level as well and dive into the power center and start looking at some of those longer term metrics to see how you improve. When you start adding intervals to your training, you will see that muscle power indicator start to move up on your graph um, in some way, sort of rounding out that the uh, triangulating out the triangle that they have uh, because so much endurance work you've already done in the base phase of your training, that's already great. You're already in the 80 percentile. Now we got to bring out that muscle power one so we feel a little more confident about your strength related to that. And muscle power is important for all runners, but certainly for those of you who are attempting to go fast or doing a sustained amount of work that muscular endurance is critical for anything over a 10K under a marathon where fast running at that intensity needs to be sustained over time. Okay, so I wish you the best of luck with all of your run intervals. Again, huge shout out to our partners at Stride as you think about doing intervals and running on the track, running on the open road and doing some of that intensity as we move into the general preparation phase with your training um, to use a power meter to be that much more accurate to learn more about what your capacities are, what your weaknesses are and how you can improve them. I wish you the best of luck out there with the training. I'll see you guys online or at the races.